Now, Brother Brian, you said you, you've been watching us? You've been, and I, I, I assume you've been liking what you've been seeing. And you've been trying to explain it to your fiance here, but you've not been able to. So what is the questions that she been having? More so because because we know Christianity is taught just like you guys, just like you guys know, we could go to verses in the Bible that depicts and knows that God is a dark man, but they give us this false image. So after being taught so wrongly and poorly, how is it that, and, and we know that books have been taken out of the Bible, right? How can we actually trust the Bible, even though I know in my head that God is black, but if I read a book, I have to be skeptical because it may be the New Testament. You know what I'm saying? So that part, like how do I know? Exactly how can you fully it? trust that the Bible is, is fully correct, basically? basically. Exactly. First, let's go to Titus. I'm gonna try to answer it in a series of scriptures, right? Because of course the first thing a lot of people think is, the white man gave us this Bible, right? The white man forced this Bible on us. Right. So why is it we should use it, right? Why should we still use it? But what we don't understand is the white man didn't understand this Bible. That's this that's Bible that's is that's only for our people. That's and that's this right. Bible says that, right? We I want you to read that first. Titus. 1 verse 15. Listen to this. Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. Right. Unto the pure, all things are pure. So the Bible says unto the pure, all things go to be pure. Right? Read. But unto them that are defiled, and believing is nothing pure, but even their mind and their conscience is defiled. So you will come across two type of people in this world. You will come across those that's pure, then when they read the Bible and they say, the, my people went through these curses, Deuteronomy. My people was forced on slave ships. My people was uh, sold on auction blocks. And this Bible said it thousands of years before it happened. And they're going to see that as pure. And they're going to they gonna come and follow. And then you're going to have those that are defiled. Meaning, whatever you say to them, whatever answer you give them, they're not going to want to hear it. But we're going to answer your question fully. Give me Psalms chapter 68 and verse 11. Right? Because the Bible... A lot of people don't even know what Bible means. What does Bible mean? That's is an acronym. You feel what I'm saying? Just like me if I say love is living on valuable energy. That ain't what it means, though. You feel what I'm saying? That's an acronym. A lot of people say that, though. You know what I'm saying? I think that probably was a song back in the day or something. Yeah, well. But a lot of people say that. But the word Bible means composition of books. Just like you might have an electrician Bible. Meaning it's a composition of things in which le electrician need to su survive. The Bible is spiritually, so you can get contact, is a composition of books. Meaning it was many different authors. You got the first five books was written by Moses. Then you got books by Joshua, books by Ezekiel, books by Baruch. You got books written by Paul. You got the book of Acts, which was written by Luke. You got many different books that was written by our ancestors, right? But listen to what the Bible says. Read what you got. Psalm chapter 68, verse 11. Uh -huh. The Lord gave the word. He said, at the end of the day, the Lord gave this word, right? Because me as a man, I can't sit down and write what's going to happen 2,000 years from now. That's right. Is it possible that I can say, from 2,000 years from now, this entire race is going to go through these things exactly how I'm writing it? Is that possible? Only the Lord can do that, right? Read it again. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of them, of those that published it. It say the, the Lord gave the word, and great was the company of those that published it. Like King James. That was a great man. It was a, one of the last black kings that ruled in Europe. It say great was the company of those that published it. The men that sit down and wrote this Bible, right? But how do we know it's true? Through the prophecies. That's right. Through the prophecies. For example, give me Lamentations chapter 5, verse 1. We're going to show you. The, the reason we know the Bible is true because it's the only book that shows prophecy. That says this is what's going to happen, exactly how it's going to happen. And in the future, it happens. It's the only book that, that do that. And if I'm wrong, show me another book. You can't do that with the Quran. You can't do that with the Book of the Dead. You can't do that with uh, the Book of Buddha, the Tammuz. You can't do that with no other book except 
the Bible. That's right. If we go into Lamentations 5 and verse 1, listen to this right here. Lamentations chapter 5 and verse 1. Three, Remember, O oh Lord, what has come upon us. So now, this is, this, is, this is the books of Lamentation written by Jeremiah, a black man, right? We can prove that over in Jeremiah 8 and 20. He said, I am black. But this book was written by, by Jeremiah. And listen to what he said. So what he said applied for him at this time, and it also applied for his people in the future. And I want you to tell me who it applied for. Read what you got. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. The Bible say our inheritance means our home. Our homeland has been given to strangers, meaning people outside of our nation. Right. Who did that happen to? Who homeland was taken from them? Bring it out! Is it somewhere I could go in uh, the Caucasus Mountains and say, this happened to the white man? Can I go over to China and say, somebody took China from the Chinese? No, this happened to our people, right? Read on. Our houses to aliens. Our houses to aliens. Another word for that is called gentrification. Like you going downtown Detroit, you see, or I grew up, I never even seen white people. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Now you just stay everywhere. Our homes is given to aliens. They call the Hispanics illegal aliens, but they stole California from the Hispanics. They stole uh, New Mexico from uh, Texas. They stole this from this land from the uh, inhabitants. But now they call them aliens. But the Bible says those people are aliens. And this is prophecy. Read on. Let's see this next part. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are widows. Our mothers is widows, but I want you to listen to verse 4. Listen to this. We have drunken our water for money. What did he say? Read it again. We have drunken our water for money. Somebody explain that to me. The prophets he say we're going to have to drink our water from money. First off, water is a natural resource. Maybe, maybe y'all don't know what's going on in Flint. But what y'all going through is biblical prophecy. That's right. These is curses that have been sent through our people for disobeying. For a, for a long time, we've been sitting in the church. You said you was a Baptist church. Have we ever been doing what the Bible said? Or have we just been jumping around, dancing, singing? I can't hear you. They don't even read the Bible. Exactly. They don't even read the Bible in church. They never do with the Bible. They never open it up to prevent these things from happening. But they say, we drunken our, our water for money. Read it again. We have drunken our water for money. Uh-huh. Our wood is sold unto us. Now they selling back us the water. So first off, they came and jacked up the water. Now you got to go buy a bottle of water just so you can drink. You feel what I'm saying? Right. They, who messed up the water in the first place? That's right. Point out the black man that did it. You feel what I'm saying? Or was it the people that came into our communities and destroyed our communities That's right. that did this? This is how we know the Bible is true. This, I'm going to show you. Give me uh, Deuteronomy. Do you got another question for me? Did, did, did that answer your question? For the most part. Okay, all praises. Deuteronomy 28. Verse 68, and then I'm going to take you whatever ne your next question is. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Bible said we're going to go into slavery again on ships. Did that not happen? Did, that, did I write this? We'll get, jump down to verse 46. Okay. Go to verse 46. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. Uh huh. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and. 48, my bad. 48. Verse 48. Uh huh. Therefore shall they serve thy enemies. The Bible says a group of people that's going to have to serve their enemies. Who is it that we got to serve? The white man, right? So if the white man was just so clever, right? and he can just hurt the Bible, why wouldn't he take out the fact that he our enemy in the Bible? Bring it out. But they don't, I mean, the Bible isn't preached in that text, in that context though. They, won't, they don't let that part be known. Absolutely. That's how they did it. Instead, of, it's no way that they could have destroyed every Bible. So what they did was they forced you not to be able to read. So now, when they read the Bible, they can say anything, 
and just convince you that that's what it say. Like most people think God loves everybody. No matter what color, no matter what race, no matter who you are, most people just will straight up tell you God loves everybody. Where do you say that in the Bible? It don't. What they did, they used the Bible and said God loves you all. Servants obey your masters. Uh, turn the other cheek. Love your enemy. Even though I'm beating you, I'm beating you, I'm raping your wife, even though I'm taking your land, even though I'm uh, poisoning your water, love me. But the Bible don't say that. The Bible says you stand up when you see oppression. Stand and speak against it. That's right. But those, but they won't let that be known, though. That's what they do. They, it's not the Bible that's tainted. It's man that's tainted. You get what I'm saying? All right, from there, we got another question. I have a question for you all, right? All, all three of you all, right? You married you? You married? Okay. You're not married? And you're engaged. Okay. So, my question. As a man, the, the ruler of the house, right? And do, you, do you believe the man is the ruler of the house? Is it 50-50? Yeah. No, what is it? The man is the head of the household. He makes all the rules and stuff, all of that. We he make all the rules yeah, and decisions. The one supposed to obey her husband. And you believe that too, sis? <laughs> you see, she was like, uh, you know, <laughs> you know. But <laughs> well, we gonna get there. I, I respect him and I do let him. I mean, he he's a man, but we give me Genesis 18. I mean, but with it, well, I mean, what's been going on is like. Women has been forced to be independent. Mm -hmm. So women really don't count on men in that in so many aspects. In oh, that give me Isaiah three. You know what I'm saying? So women are so independent that they really can't let go of that independence and really let men actually do that. So like really men, ain't, it really ain't too many men that's actually taking that standpoint in our community. I would say that's that's absolutely true, right? And I'm going to tell you, because how many of y'all, before y'all said, or heard women say, I'm an independent woman, right? Or you, you ever do consider yourself an independent woman? What a lot of our people don't realize is when the woman becomes independent, it actually hurts the fabric of the households in our communities. That's right. And once you hurt the fabric of the, commun the households in the communities, you ultimately destroy the community because strong nations are built on strong families that's, that's right. Right. when you take out all the strong families and you take out all the strong men you have chaos that's right? right and this is what you got in the community you know what I want? Isaiah 3 and 12. listen to this right here Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12 as for my people so the bible said ask for my people did it say all people because the white man had you so this for everybody he said ask for my people who was the speaking isaiah an Israelite. As for my people, we children are their oppressors. The Bible say children are my people's oppressors. How do children become our, our being our oppressors? Why? Because they become the gang members. Right, right. You feel what I'm saying? They the ones who got to uh, who go try to sneak in your house and break in when you're not there. Right, you right, feel right. what I'm saying? They doing the drive-bys. Right, right. It's starting at, from the age of 12 on up now. These young dudes is jumping off the porch. Right, right. And I know that because that's around the age when we jumped off the porch. When, when I started going to high school, I started to corrupt the community, terrorize the community, and oppress the people. That's why the elders in our community is too scared to say something. It used to be back in the day where it was, the, old, the old lady down the street seeing you do something, it was just as bad as your mama seeing you doing it. Right, right. Now it's shut up, old lady. You know what I'm saying? You and then you got mothers. I'm gonna have to say it. I'm not y'all sisters here now, but as other sisters, oh, don't say nothing to my kid. Right, right. Don't say nothing to my child. Right. This my child. Dude. Don't don't say nothing to my child. Right. That's what this is harboring. This turned our children into monsters. That's right. Read right. it again from the top. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Children are their oppressors. And what else? And women rule over them. The ones that rule over these children is the women. Why? Because most of the time the father left. He may have died in the streets in this never-ending cycle. Or the woman, he didn't want to be with the woman because he didn't know the Bible. So he didn't want to be with the woman. So now she like she don't let him see. Her father. 
You know what I'm saying? She don't let the baby see the father. And now the women ruling over these future gangbangers. That's why I'm in. Nigga don't say nothing about my mama. You feel what I'm saying? Or, oh, I'm going to go get my brother. And the brother always end up dead or in jail. Why? Because it's the women ruling over them. And most of the, and most of, on both sides of my family, the, the pillar of the family was the grandma. I don't know if y'all was like that, but I didn't even know my grandfathers. Like, I, like, I knew my great, my grandfather, uh, but I'm talking about great, you know what I'm saying? And the pillar of most communities is the great grandma. And once she died, the family usually split up. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's happened to you. My grandma died, we lost the house. I don't never see none of my cousins. When she was alive, we used to have family reunions, 200 people there. You feel what I'm saying? The pillar of the house usually be the woman. But not, in this day and age, it's time to reverse the cycle. That's the only way our families gonna stay together is if we have strong men. That's the only way we're gonna build strong families. Cause it's gonna get to a point where that young man that you got, he gonna need somebody to teach him how to be a man. And the woman can only do so much. This is why this come in. Give me Genesis chapter 18. This is going back to our forefather, right? As an Israelite, you gotta know that the reason you're an Israelite is because of one man. What's his name? Huh? Jacob, yeah, but he Jacob comes from somebody. It all started somewhere. I'm gonna help you all out. Abraham, you got it. There you go. You was oh she said, oh yeah, all praises. You know, you got a you got a woman with some sense. All praises. Abraham, right? Abraham made an agreement with the Lord. The Lord said, I'm going to take your seed, meaning your sperm, and I'm going to create a, a nation of people. And these people are going to be my people. I'm going to treat them as my children. Why? Because Abraham was friends with the Lord. The Lord said, this is my friend, right? And let me show you why it is that the Lord liked Abraham so much. Listen to this. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. For I know him that he will... Start up at uh, 18. Okay. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. Uh -huh. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. The Lord said, Abraham surely going to become a great and mighty nation. How we know this Bible real? Because this is what happened. We are descendants of this man. Right? Read on. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. All the nations shall be blessed. Why? Because wherever the Israelites go, the economy rise. You feel what I'm saying? The Israelites here in America, the America is the most strong and powerful nation on earth. Right. Through our labor, through our, our, our skill. Right. You know what I'm saying? Wherever we go, things change. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Read up. For I know him. God said he know Abraham. And what else? That he will command his children. What'd he say? That he will command his children. No, he gonna be friends with his children. That he will command his children. He just gonna have a relationship with his children. That he will command his children. Uh huh. And his household. And his what? And his household. So who is the household? Cause he's already mentioned the children. He said he gonna command the children. So what is the household? What is that? The woman. There you go. The woman. God said the reason he made this covenant with Abraham is because he will command his children and his household. Read after him. He know when he when he come down to lay down the law. God said do this. We gonna do this. Abraham gonna make sure it's gonna get done. That's why God loved Abraham. So us as men, we gotta follow in the examples of Abraham. Not in the examples that they give us in the world, Tyler Perry, you know what I'm saying? Uh, who else you got? All, all the black father figures that they give us, they always have errors. And the errors is the woman. The woman tell them something, grab them up by the ear, boy, come here. You know what I'm saying? They, uh, they whipped. I'm glad, you see I'm trying to curve my leg, I'm trying to work on that. They whipped, you know what I'm saying? They do whatever the woman say, but God said, what read it again? For I know him, that he will command his house, his children, and his household after him. So that's it. So God said he looking for men who go command their household, who go command their children. Sister, 
You should be looking for a husband who gonna command their household. And what? After this righteousness. You feel what I'm saying? After righteousness. Most of our men have become effeminate and soft nowadays. That's why you can't tell him, man. You tell him pull up his pants, he ready to shoot you. You feel what I'm saying? You you step on somebody's shoe, he oh nigga, you disrespecting me. You feel what I'm saying? But that's why all these shootings happen out here in Flint. Why? Because it's a bunch of emotional men who was raised by their mother. So whatever their mo mother emotions is, that's their emotions. You feel what I'm saying? And us as men, we got to come out here and change that, right? Nah, y'all said, y'all y'all uh, got kids? Y'all expecting, expecting one, right? So go to Exodus 22. Because y'all said y'all engaged. Wait, 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 before we go there, you as a man, you got to command your household, right? You ready for that? To lay down the law? Okay, listen to this. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Let's go there. Check it out. We're going to see if this is. We're going to lay down the law on him. Or is she going to drag him up by the ear? <laughs> Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh huh. The woman. The what? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now I'm talking to Brian here. I'm talking to Brian here. The woman ain't supposed to wear what pertains to a man. What that talking about, bro? Hey, these pants. Hey, I be killing her about these joints all the time because, like I said, I, I watch you guys all the time, and I, I know we kill our women. I mean, because we got to get our culture back, and we really don't know our culture. This is really European culture, just like our food and eating habits. But you know, it's hard to break what we know out of some. But yeah, we knew we knew this was coming. Go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis. Listen to what Abraham said. Listen to it. You know what I'm saying? I want, I'm just going to let it soak in. I ain't going to say nothing. You know? I ain't going to say nothing. What did it say? Genesis chapter 18 verse 19. For I know him that he will come mad. Now, I don't know you, right? <laughs> but God know Abraham. What 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 did he say? That he will command his children and his household after him. That's what you all do, man. You know what I'm saying? It didn't say, did it say you got to ask? Right. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, you know, this is why I brought her out here. Absolutely. To help in my quest and command. And you're doing good. You're doing, you're on the right path. You're doing good. You know what I'm saying? But we got to bring this stuff out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because that's our job. If I don't say nothing, that's a form of hatred. That's almost like me saying, uh, let her die. You know what I'm saying? If I don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? You as a man, that's why I'm dealing directly with you. You know what I'm saying? You as a man, you got to command your household. Because I don't know. You said y'all expecting? Y'all know what y'all have? Boy. A boy. All praise. So you got to grade. You got to be there for that boy. And you got Exodus 22 and 16. Because you said you engaged. You know what I'm saying? We got to get to that marriage point. And, and don't put it off. Don't be like, uh, we, we, we going to wait. A little bit down the line, because this is what the Bible says. What does it say? Exodus chapter 22 and verse 16. And if a man enticed a maid. If you entice a maid, meaning you spit game, you said, hey, little mama. You know what I'm saying? Read. That is not betrothed. She, uh, she wasn't married. She wasn't engaged before that. Read. And lie with her. Y'all laid down, had, had uh, sex. Read. He shall surely endow her. To be his wife. Right, Did he say right. wait? Did he say put it off? Wait, we're gonna wait a year. We gonna uh we gonna wait until uh, we get our careers. We should Yeah, sister. It ain't say we gonna wait. Read it again. If a man enticed a maid, uh-huh, that is not betrothed. Yeah, that's and how you gotta do that's love right there. You gotta put him on blast. Read and <laughs> lie with her, uh-huh. He shall surely endow her. Wife. There ain't no way no year. Ain't no way to little time. Ain't no let's get our lives together. If you if you felt she was good enough to lay down with, have sex with, put your seed in, you gotta marry her. You feel what I'm saying? But she gotta get up them pants first. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta y'all gotta do this together. If y'all on this walk together, you you take the pants off. And you go down there and get that paperwork. You feel what I'm saying? And y'all embark on this journey together. You feel what I'm saying? Because this is what we do. We build a strong families. We got to build strong families. And that's ultimately going to build a strong nation. Right? Because what y'all don't realize, God is setting up an army on this earth. Right? Give me that. Give me uh, Revelation 7. 
verse 4. God sent up an army on this earth in his last days to protect our people. You feel what I'm saying? And what we come out to do is to call you in. You know what I'm saying? We want you to be part of this number right here. Right. Listen Re to this. Revelation chapter 7 is Start at verse 1. Listen to this. Because this is prophecy. Remember I said there's no other book that can do what this Bible do. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 7 verse 1. Bring it up. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. So God said it's four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. You can't see them, but it's four angels standing on the earth for a specific reason. Specific, specific reason. Read. Holding the four corner, holding the four winds of the earth. The four winds is going into destruction. It's four uh, nations. They got nuclear power, meaning they can press a button and things is over. You feel what I'm saying? It's four places that got this power. Read. That the wind should not blow on the earth. But these four angels is stopping it. Making sure Trump don't hit the button and blow some stuff up. Kim Jong-un don't hit the button. Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin and Russia don't hit the button. The angels is watching and making sure they don't do it until something happens. Read. Nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God. So he said another angel appeared in front of these four angels having the seal of the living God. What's the seal of the living God? Give me that. Isaiah chapter 8. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you what the seal of the living God is. Because what we don't know, we live in the greatest time period according to this Bible. <laughs> Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. What's the seal of the living God? The law. So another angel appeared with the book of the law, with the laws of God, and said what? Do Revelation chapter 7, verse 4, Three. 2. Having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, Till we have sealed the servants of our God. So the, the, it's an angel that appeared to the angels that got control of the destruction of the earth. The end times. And he's, the angel said, do not destroy nothing until we seal the servants of God. That's this is what you're watching right now. We sealing the servants of God with the instructions. Right. Sister, it's time for you to come out the pants. Brother, marry that sister. Command your house. This is a form of how the angel is sealing the, the servants of the of God. Right, read them. Yeah. Verse 4. I, have, I heard the number of them which were sealed. Now, it's a, it's a direct number that got to be sealed. A direct number of people that got to learn their nationality. Got to learn how to, how to walk with Christ. Got to learn Jesus Christ is a black man and not white. It's a certain number that got to learn this. Right? Read them. And there was sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. How many were sealed? A hundred and forty and four thousand of the, all the tribes of the children of Israel. It's 144,000 men who going to rise up in these tribes. And what they going to do? They going to teach their families. They going to teach their communities. They going to pull they they going to pull the lies down that been taught in the black communities for thousands of years. And they going to do it with this Bible. Read them. Of the tribe of Judah. Of the tribe of Judah. Which, which tribe are you from? You from Judah, right? We were sealed 12,000. It's 12,000 spots for these men. It's time for you to get ready. You gotta start. That's why you cannot wait. It's 12,000 spots of, this, of the army of God for your tribe. You feel what I'm saying? 12,000 spots. So how is it that you're going to make it? Give me that. Uh, Psalms chapter 119 verse 69. How you doing, sister? Is your mom? All praise to the most. How you been teaching the sister? Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Clap it up for Mom Dukes. That's what I'm talking about. A lot of moms out here, they teaching their daughters how to uh, drop it like it's hot. You you said drop all that and keep these laws, right? That's what I'm talking about. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 119, verse 69. 59. Verse 59. I thought on my way. So this is what we all got to do here. Bryant, the household of Bryant. Sister, I keep forgetting your name. Shay. 
and mama and mama, mama shit. <laughs> we gotta think on our ways. Read it again. I thought on my way. We gotta think on our ways. Meaning, I used to sell drugs. I used to run around, get tattoos, jump from woman to woman. I had to sit back and think on my ways and say, no, this is not productive for my people. Right. Me being engaged for two, three years ain't productive for my people. Right. Women wearing the pants, that ain't productive for my people. Right. You got to think on your ways. And what else? And turn my feet unto thy testimonies. Three. I may haste. What did it say? I may haste. So it said I may haste, meaning King David said as soon as I heard, I jumped on it. You, you need to go home get, if you true about this, you going to go home, get that dress, right? Make haste. If you true about this, tomorrow morning, you're going to be down at the courtroom. Like, let's get this paperwork done. Let's at least get the paperwork done. We'll worry about the celebration later. We at least going to get our paperwork done. You feel what I'm saying? If you sincere, you're going to make haste. You, sister, Mama Shea been telling you, you got to wear a dress. You see Mama Shea showed up in the dress. She like, no, I ain't gonna get caught slipping out here. <laughs> she said, you, if you, what the Bible say, you gotta make haste. And what else? And delay not to keep thy commandments. You cannot delay. You can't wait. You can't say, you know what? I'm gonna do it next week. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna stop smoking the cigarettes next week. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna stop messing with that dude that I know ain't no no good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him one more shot. You know what I'm saying? We can't. We can't put it off because when you do, give me Sirach, chapter five, verse seven. That's why you need a sixteen, eleven, man. What is this, man? I get one. Give me Sirach, chapter five, verse. Book of Sirach, chapter five, verse seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. The Bible say, don't make tear meaning don't put off. Don't be like, you know what? I know I got some things to work on, and then I'ma come. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a first. I'ma work on this, and then I'ma stop doing it. You know what I'm saying? Or let me get a little bit more money. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm going to tell you all the truth. Man, I, I used to sell weed, right? I used to sell weed, right? I had a lot of weed that I was selling, right? I had to flush it down the toilet. Because I knew if I kept it, my little brother was crying like, oh, bro, you flushed on, you know what I'm saying? You could have gave it to me. But I knew if I kept it, I wasn't going to never stop. You feel what I'm saying? You got to make haste. Don't wait. Say, you know, after I sell the rest of this half boat, <laughs> then I'm coming back. You know what I'm saying? Or don't say, oh, you know, I gotta spread my loins. I gotta, I gotta uh, meet up with that one dude that I've had a crush on since I was six, and then I'm coming to God. Don't do that. You feel what I'm saying? Read them. And put not off from day to day. Don't put off from day to day. Read. For sure, for suddenly. For <laughs> suddenly, if you do, if you try to wait, if you try to say, you know what, tomorrow I ain't gonna wear pants no more. If you wait, we shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. God gonna be mad. You feel what I'm saying? He like, I keep giving him chances. I show him this video. I saw him. I even brought him right in front of him. And he still ain't gonna do what I said. He gonna be mad. Just like you gonna be upset if you keep telling somebody the same thing over and over and they keep doing wrong. You think God don't ever get mad? He said if you, if you continuously do what you're doing, he gonna get angry and what's gonna happen? And then thy psychiatrist Security. Read again. And in thy security. In your security when you think of everything good. Thou shalt be destroyed. That's when you're going to get hit by the bus. You know what I'm saying? That's when they're going to do a random drive-by. And you ain't got nothing to do with it. And you're going to get hit. I got a question. Go ahead. Let me hear what you got. What's with your the, question? With the women's garments, like, can they wear, like, stuff under their garments? For Absolutely. For work and stuff? For what? Like, if you got to go to work? You mean, like, leggings and stuff like that? Yeah. Absolutely. That's what leg is made for. I remember my grandma used to have the stockings. You know what I'm saying? My grandma lived till she about 90 something. She had the stockings. Nowadays, women wear that on the outside. You see, it be down, oh, excuse me, it be 30 degrees outside. They got on some little leggings. And then they'll tell you, I can't wear no dress. It's too cold. And be outside the club in freezing weather with a little dress on this big. You feel what I'm saying? We got to change our mindset. That's why I go to, Revel go to uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. We got to change our mindset. Every, once you become an Israelite, well, once you figure out you Israelite, rather, your whole mindset got to change. You can't take the way you was thinking a couple of months ago and try to bring that into here. 
You can't take the what you learn in the streets and bring it into here. You feel what I'm saying? Everything got to change. Read what you got. Romans chapter 12 and verse like for 2. For example, I'm going to ask a question. If it don't apply, it don't apply. But how many of us out here smoke? <laughs> Raise your hand. Oh, you see, she, that's a good sister. Look at it. Look, she pointed her mama out right there. Oh, pretty. She pointed her mama out like, you have her? She do. <laughs> That's good right there. Get in the car. No, I said keep her right there. Keep her right there. That's good right there. So we got two smokers. You don't smoke? You don't smoke? And Mama Shay don't smoke. Yeah. I used to. You, you, all praises. Me too. I used to. It's good to say that. Like, I, I used to do that. You know what I'm saying? Now I'd be telling people, like, the young dudes, when I, where I work, I drive around all the time. And the young dudes be like, yeah, yeah, I'll be smoking. I don't smoke, man. That shit lame. If he's like, it's lame. I'm like, yeah, that's lame, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to be a hundred with him. Like, that's lame. The new, it's cool to be righteous now. You know what I'm saying? That's right. We're going to make righteous look good. We're going to make following God look good. Anything outside of God, that's, that's lame. We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? I'll read what you got. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Uh -huh. And be not conformed to this world. So the Bible said, don't be conformed to this world. Don't let what's going on in this world shake the way you think. You know what I'm saying? Shake the way you make decisions. The world say it's cool to be a homosexual. Pick it out. Don't be conformed to that. The world say, you know what I'm saying? The world say, the world will tell you, you got to uh, try a couple men out before you find Mr. Right. Don't be conformed to that. The Bible say you lay with her, you stay with her. You know? The world tell you probably be a player. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I had older folk, they used to be, pro oh man, man, that's a player right there. When I used to be wicked. You know what I'm saying? Now that's lame. We don't do that. Read you up. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the only way it's going to happen is through these commandments. The only way it's going to happen is taking heed to the commandments. I couldn't have changed if the Bible didn't say one thing and I, and I was doing the opposite. When I read, I said, damn, I got to change. You know what I'm saying? I didn't come make no excuse. Oh, no, the white man wrote that book. That's what a lot of people do. You know what I'm saying? It says, stop smoking weed. Oh, no, the Mike White man wrote that. You know what I'm saying? I like what y'all doing, black revolutionary stuff, but I would smoke my weed. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that, right? Give me, I want the sister to hear that because her daughter pointed her out, say she smoked. So make sure you come down here. Give me 1 Corinthians 3. Bring it out. I want to make sure she get this one. And then you listen too. So when you see your mama smoking, you be like, 1 Corinthians 3, mama. Okay? You got it? First, say 1 Corinthians 3. Read what you got. Come on, let's 1 go. Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Read. Oh. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? So that's a question. Do we know that we the temple of God? Or is temple of God a uh, greater grace? Or what's the big big church out here? I'm, I'm from here. I just came back to visit, really. Okay, well, Holy Grove Baptist Church or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mount Zion, really. Mount Zion, right? Mount Zion. That's not the temple of God. The Bible says, what read it again? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? The Bible says you are the temple of God. Right. It ain't Mount Zion. Right. It's you. The walk is Zion. Right, read them. And that the Spirit of God in you. The Bible says the Spirit of God is living inside of you. Each one of y'all Israelites, God put his Spirit inside of you. That's why when y'all heard the word, y'all stopped. You know what I'm saying? You know what? Y'all pulled up. Y'all came and pulled up. Y'all weren't even walking by. Y'all said, oh, we got to go over there. God is dwelling inside of you. Right? Read on. If any man defile the temple of God, if any man or woman Defile the temple of God. How do you defile the temple? Smoking. Tattoos. Alright, so question on that. Fornicating. So, fornicating. Drugs. Drugs. You don't do drugs because that's lame. You feel what I'm saying? All of this is how. Well, you had a question? Yeah, I was about to say so. Is it on topic? No, no, it's on topic. So what do so what do I do with these things? With the tattoos? What? All right, hold on. Let me finish the, the smoking, and then we're going to get to the tattoo. Because I got tattoos. You see my neck? I look like I was a lame once upon a time. You know what I'm saying? I got tattoos all over my body. 
You know what I'm saying? But I, I, we don't get to that. But first, I want to get to the cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? Or the weed. Look, he's about to say, I don't smoke cigarettes. But I'll just smoke the ganja. <laughs> no, brother, you can't smoke neither one, according to God. Read it, read it one more time. If any man defile the temple of God. If you want to defile the temple of God that God gave you this body, if you do that, read. Him shall God destroy. God going to destroy you. How you get destroyed? You get lung cancer. You get, uh, like, I remember I used to be a top athlete, fit. If I run down the street right now, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I used to run five miles a day. You know what I'm saying? If I, if I, I probably won't make it to that truck right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God will destroy you. He will slowly, slowly destroy you. And he can destroy you in other ways. You know what I'm saying? He can take people away from you that you care about. You know what I'm saying? He can hurt he can hurt you physically. Cause you not be able to walk again. God can do stuff you can't even imagine to you. You be like, how did I end up here? Because God destroyed me. Right, read up. I don't know what's why you walking away, Sister Shay. You need this medicine. I'm coming, but I ain't going nowhere. Okay, read what you got. Let no man dis Read from the top. Do the rock. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God. Him shall God destroy. Mm -hmm. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are. So you being the temple of God, you got to be holy. Holy means separate. Divided. So other people, the white man, he can smoke. He can smoke himself to death. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to be caught doing that lame stuff. You know what I'm saying? You, the, uh, the China man, he can, uh, eat dog. He, he can eat the dog. He can eat the pig. Extra poor, but us being holy, we can't defile ourselves with these things. That's right. We gotta get beef pepperoni. You know what I'm saying? Turkey pepperoni. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't take a beans and go put the the uh, the uh, 97 in it. You know what I'm saying? 87. You don't put 87 in the beans. We the beans. We the beans walk around. That's right. So we can't just put anything in our bodies. You feel me? Because why? God will destroy us. Now your question, so you say, I already got the tattoos, right? I got tattooed when I was young. It could have been last week. It don't matter. What do I do now about it? Right? Give me 2 Corinthians. Uh, 5 and 6. 5 and 16? 5 and 17. All right, 5 and 17. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Bring it on. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The Bible says if you in Christ, meaning you are a repentant, a repentant Israelite, you become a new creature, right? So yeah, I used to sell dope. I used to fornicate. I used to tattoo my body. I do, I can go off the lips. It ain't that many sins I ain't did. You know what I'm saying? But now that I'm in Christ, I'm a new creature. Right, right read on. Old things are passed away. All the old stuff passed away. You know what I'm saying? God will forgive it. If you put away that the sin that you did, he'll, he'll erase that. Right, read on. Behold, all things are become new. All things become new. What you say? Second yeah, Second Corinthians five, 5 and 17. It say all things are become new. All the stuff you did beyond the day that you decide I'm gonna walk this journey is forgiven. You know what I'm saying? And on the way, we still might make mistakes. We gotta ask for forgiveness and don't do it no more. That's the whole thing about the Bible. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 66. That's the whole thing about the Bible. Israel, we made a mistake and went against God. We have to repent that he put us back on our royal state as the royal priest of the earth. Right? You go on? 2 mm -hmm. Ezra chapter 16, verse 66. Bring it on. What will ye do? Or how will ye hide your sins before God? So what God said? How is we going to hide our sins before God? You can't. God know everything you've done. But he gave you a chance to conquer it. You feel what I'm saying? He gave you, us a chance to change who we are. Right? But if you try to continue, destruction. Read on. And his angels. Read. Behold, God himself is the judge. He said God is the judge at the end of the day. Read. Fear him. Uh-huh. Lead off from your sins. So what all of us got to do? We got to leave off from our sins. Right, right. If we was fornicators, we got to get married. Right, right. If we was womanizers, you got to 
provide, be a provider for your woman. Now. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? If we was uh, if we tattooed our body, you gotta stop tattooing your body. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? If you was wearing the pants in the club, dropping it like it's hot, you gotta put on the dress, right. rock your fringes and borders of blue. Right, right. So your royal status on the earth. Right? Read on. Forget your iniquities. Forget everything you used to be into. Read. And to meddle no more with them. So that's the whole goal. Meddle no more with your sins. Whatever sins it is that you deal with, don't go back to them no more. And this is the how you start a revolution on the earth. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.